Bros Podcast. Welcome, beautiful listener, to the Humanist Podcast with Hammer and Steph. Welcome to your own <laughs> podcast. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, too bad I've been banned for a while. Yes, you have been a naughty boy. You <laughs> I, I have not I come on time. Uh, yeah, that's true. A guilty as charged. Um, but what did come on time was a lot of, uh, I don't know, like yes. news from different types of like, from different outlets uh, in terms mm. of like pop culture. We have a wide variety yeah. of stuff today. We do have that <clears throat> good old stack of Segway titles. Yeah, yes, we do. Indeed. And the first, the first one uh, is actually a game that we've uh, been hyping it up a little bit. The Necromunda Hired Gun, yeah, trailer, which uh, Enter the Hive trailer, it's called. I want to enter the hive now. Yeah, I mean, this trailer. What do you think? It it looks much more promising, to me at least. Yeah, I, I totally agree because last time the last trailer had quite. Like some some really good stuff in it that made me interested, you know, like the 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 pace of the combat was it, it reminded us of Doom, and mm. you know it had a lot of just the fact that it is in Necromunda that it looked polished, you know, it had quite a few things. But then our complaint was the fact that we mostly just saw that really stock looking AR, uh, and oh, yeah. <laughs> so we were like, "Fuck, are they just gonna are they not gonna take advantage of the fact that the 40k universe has?" The most insane weaponry ever created in fiction but then now they showed us some more interesting yeah. weapons as well yeah to be fair the ar is still featured it is it's still here but uh <laughs> yeah we got to see some some variety and you know that's that's what we like to see yeah uh and the artwork also on it's just it looks superb really yeah they would you agree they got that down to a T, and yeah. it really feels like that, like shitty, grimy industrial fucking <laughs> hive cities. You know, like that really, the ultimate yeah. shitty place to be in the empire. Yeah, and you can like see huge freight trains carrying like some molten stuff, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. blasting past them like a maglev system. Yeah, yeah, and then uh... he even says like, <laughs> "Things leaking throne knows what." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I love that uh, that they added like uh, throw knows what because it's kind of a uh, nudge to fans, you know, to use <laughs> to use expressions like that. Yeah, they're they're just basically just saying, hey, yeah, we're paying attention. We're not <laughs> fucking with the IP here. We we want to give you something good. Yeah, and and, and uh, yeah, and the narrator was pretty good as well. I feel like that kind yeah. of like. That kind of accent and that kind of, um, you know, just the delivery he had uh, was kind of like what you what you hear for every like imperial guardsman in the audiobooks of the Horus mm. Heresy, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not they're not taking their life too seriously because it's basically worth nothing, nothing, you know. They're, <laughs> you could be dead any minute, and that's just how it is. Imperial and you can, life, exactly. And you can also pet the dog. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's a nice feature. Your own cyber mastiff. A cyber mastiff. That's that's also a very 40k <laughs> thing. Yeah, very 40k. That's a very 40k <laughs> indeed. Yeah, and yeah. I think we like uh, to go in, into some detail. Yeah, like you mentioned, one thing that's cool about uh, 40k is o always like archaeo tech. Yeah, uh, which is basically tech from a previous age, which is much more advanced than the current age. Yeah, is, you know, to us modern humans today, it seems very counterintuitive, but it's actually been the case throughout history that you know society and, and civilization can regress, also not only progress, like the dark uh, ages, like the dark ages, and you know, we in the forty k universe, it most certainly has regressed to a very you know almost dark age like society after um, if it, yeah if, if mankind is uh exist or like that kind of um if it's the year forty thousand and it's been yeah. that level of like that amount of wars and power control struggles and all that kind of shit of yeah it makes sense that at some points there will be peaks and then it just goes away 
Mm -hmm. But the thing is that in like the current 40k or for the first millennium, you can still find relics, weapons, technology that is really powerful. And like and, in the uh, Space Hulks. Yeah, for instance, Space Hulks. Perfect example. That's such a cool concept as well, though. The Space Hulks. Yeah, it's a perfect concept. I mean, who came up with that? Basically, conglomerations are just accumulated ship parts that were lost in the in the warp. Yeah. Or ships, uh, whole ships, and just, you know, pulled together, <laughs> meshed together in the warp. Yeah. By gravity and, and other forces, and then just pooped out <laughs> randomly <laughs> into real space. And, and then some poor sods get sent to... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, often inhabited by like not non too kind races, and um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not exactly Jehovah's Witnesses you find in there. Well, no, I guess kind of though the zealots and cultists and stuff like that. But yeah, they do try to sell you on some religious aspects and ideas. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that <laughs> they have a very very good pitch. <laughs> How to worship yeah. excess? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they they give you an ultimatum. Ah oh, well, um, if you want to go exactly so, so then <laughs> if you ever want to go explore for old lost technology and uh, fight off Jehovah's Witnesses in space, then uh, go try to find the Space Hulk. Mm. Yeah, so so like the Space Hulks, basically ancient ships could be you know from a man man made ships or human ships. Uh, mm -hmm. Could be Aldar, could be whatever spacefaring race there is. Just. If it's lost at some point of time in in the warp, um, some kind of forces kind of <laughs> kind of mesh them together and poop them out, and <laughs> yeah. then you get this giant hunk of of metal, basically with uh, sometimes its own atmosphere. Yeah, you know, it's almost at a planetary level sometimes uh, in terms of gravity. Yeah, and uh, or like not the, not in a full planet, but like a planetoid. Uh, and yeah, you can board it. You can uh, search it because you know it might be ten thousand years old. And if it's that, the technology, at least human technology, was much more advanced. You can find STCs. You know, can find technology that's worth half a galaxy. <laughs> ST yeah, STDs. Yeah, yeah, standard templates and constructs. <laughs> <laughs> SDCs, not STDs. <laughs> yeah. Go on board an uh, Urgle ship and you might get both. Yeah, yeah, sure. But, I mean, you can find uh, cultists there. You can find orcs. You can find uh, gene stealer cults. All good jazz, you know. Especially gene stealers. Speaking of gene stealers, they actually mentioned those in the trailer. Because uh, they actually yeah. mention quite a lot of the factions that you'll potentially be encountering in the game, which I found very interesting because you had uh, Gene Stealer cults, you, they mm -hmm. mentioned the Inquisition, um, yeah. and quite a lot of others. So, I mean, if it's that level of variety in terms of like enemies you can face and stuff, you know, I mm, I will yeah, very much off. enjoy it. Yeah, me too. That it seems like they're gonna honor the IP, like I said. Yeah, uh, but we'll just have to see what what they come up will come up with here. And uh, also, I noticed that one of the like bounty hunter like uh, girls with the blue hair had some arc arcing lightning from coming from her palms and some fire and some. So it seems like it can be maybe a psych girl also. Mm -hmm. That's also very. Um, that, that's. <laughs> That's like the magic equivalent of cryptocurrency in terms of volatility. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's basically do or die. You're just like, oh, <laughs> you might you might get like a, you know, you might shoot some insane like power boosted lightning storm, or you might explode. You never know. Yeah, yeah, that is, uh, that is, <laughs> and you will inevitably mutate into something unrecognizable. Yeah eventually unless you get executed by your comrades as a mercy killing before that yeah of course of course i mean and you should as you should be imagine uh, if that because... was a feature uh, a gameplay feature in the game that you could actually just die <laughs> during no. gameplay <laughs> yeah is it like if mutate. you yeah if you chose to be a psyker you could actually like let's say you pick a perk um of like you know authentic psyching 
where you actually had like a random multiplier or like you know randomized uh, slew of effects that could happen, and one of them was like yeah. you can just spontaneously combust, and others would be stuff like you know you might suddenly hit for like four times the damage and five yeah. times the AOE, and like you know. <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool. Uh, maybe like have 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 a talent or something called unsafe dabbling <laughs> into the <laughs> yeah. materium or something exactly and it, it would give you like a 40 percent chance to deal some major catastrophic damage to yourself or 60 percent <laughs> chance to deal major damage to the enemy it sounds like you would have to quick save and quick load a lot <laughs> yeah yeah maybe not <laughs> that realistic but it would be cool you know it would be funny so, at least <laughs> as a meme yeah but yeah i mean the a lot of promise with I think this new trailer just kind of refined and maybe explained in a little more detail what we're gonna get. Yeah. Um. Uh, and uh, as far as the, like our previous assessment, it pretty much seems like what we were hoping hoping for. Yeah, absolutely. Um. And it looks like yeah. it's getting a lot more attention as well because usually Warhammer trailers uh, won't be like too. Uh, you know, up there in terms of views and stuff. Um, so this no, one, no. this one has like, I see that even the the newest one that we just saw, the Enter the Hive trailer, came out April twenty first, which is like a week ago, mm. and it has like four hundred and fifty thousand views plus, and it has yeah. uh, nine point nine k likes versus seventy dislikes, which means that you know we're not the only ones yeah. who's hyped for this game. No, no. Uh, reading through the comments here, there's a lot of emperor memes and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> As expected. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it looks very good. It looks very good, and you can only kind of you you can feel that the developers are kind of hinting to the viewers of this trailer that they mm -hmm. know what they're doing. You know, they're basically yeah. saying like with the the hints to gene stealers to the Inquisition, you know. It's uh, it's looking good. It's looking good. It is. Um, hopefully, this means that developers are, you know, um, starting to take the license a little bit more seriously. And not only that, but that they're also allotted a little bit more budget. Uh, that also, yeah. like, you know, the publishers can see more of the potential here. <clears throat> I totally agree. We will, we'll, we'll be rooting. We'll be rooting for it. Yeah, so it comes out uh, June 1st on digital and June 30th on in retail. Mm -hmm. So safe to say this is a day one purchase for me. That's just like yeah. not a quite even not even a question. Um, no, this one I'm I'm also going to buy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it, this is like this one is so up our alley. It almost comes out of our mouth. Yeah, you know, we so. could have come up with this game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Except we Basically. we tend we it, it's when getting closer thinking. to our dream game. Yeah, our dream game is a little bit too dreamy though. So <laughs> would we would always kind of keep it at that level that it was not realistic to to get such a game. <laughs> well, we're we're approaching the feasibility. Of yeah, it, yeah, I sure, think. sure. Yeah. You would you would like like you had to have like a VR. 100% realistic rendition where you stood beside the emperor being Horus. I <laughs> think that would, into you. that that would I think if if I were to ever do that just like someone told me like hey put on these VR glasses and 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 that's what I was put into I would probably just look at the emperor and uh I would die. Yeah. Because that's what you do if you look directly at the emperor. But <laughs> yeah. you would, to be fair, you would be Horus, so you should be able to kind of survive a simple look, a simple glance. Uh, for Horus, it should be fine. But then I would look myself mm. in the mirror, and then I would die. <laughs> and then you would die. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what was that again? That was that wasn't even a meme. That was some kind of in one of the heresy books, Horus heresy books. There was a story about a guy who died when he looked when at the, he saw em the emperor. Yeah, because he was. If I if I don't I don't remember like the details. It's been it's been a while since I read this one, but I believe it was like a guy 
who was like working in the palace and he was walking and talking to himself out loud and then suddenly mm-hmm. this like super regal booming voice just answered him casually and then he looked up to see who it was and he was the emperor and he just died <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty <laughs> okay. Just such a concept. Mm, yeah. I mean, I uh, hope that is not in the job description. <laughs> Working at the, the palace, you know. I believe risk, that's actually... Dying. Isn't that, like, for, for them, isn't that actually, like, the, the best possible outcome? Honor. Yeah, that's an honor. That's the uh, the emperor replies your chat with a heart <laughs> emoji and then you die. <laughs> then you just explode. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh well. Moving uh, on. Well, we have some uh, some fantasy news as well. Keeping to the Warhammer franchise. Yeah. Uh, Vermintide Two is getting you know the Chaos Wastes update. Yeah, it's it's not exactly news because I think the update has been out for for a little bit now. Um, yeah or yeah there's not not news but there's coming some more features right uh or i think it's out already or something yeah Yeah. it's like it's like so they added that free expansion of the chaos waves which uh i hear a lot of good things about because i haven't tried it myself yet but i'm kind of wanting to get back into it and try it because uh yeah vermintide 2 hasn't had the best history of dlcs there's been a lot of uh, controversy in the light of like you know buggy launches and um yeah that's you know. the update i'm talking about because there were some q troubles and some stuff that they fixed okay sure yeah but still you i haven't played it i haven't uh even tried vermintide 2 only one which is extremely blasphemous by itself because vermintide 2 yeah. is still uh probably you know there, there's a reason why we're so hyped for dark tide because Roman tide 2 is such a great example of the left for dead kind of genre and it just really also like what we're hoping for with necromunda is that this one also like really nails the setting uh yeah. of, the, of the end times of fantasy and the, the voice acting is fucking brilliant and everything so uh, more content for Vermintide 2 is like a huge plus for me. And uh, now it's free too, which is insane. And it adds like roguelite elements to it where you just go on runs instead and you get loot and all that. Um, yeah. And then of course it has like all these areas that reflect the different chaos gods. And man, oh man. So, uh, Mr. Hammer, if uh, you want to get into the game, it's a good time. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, me and my schedule. Yeah, I know. Uh, we'll we'll just have to try to squeeze something in there, eventually. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, sure. I'm I'm down. I'm down. You know. But this not this weekend. Next weekend, maybe. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's go for that. Yeah. Any who's. Uh, any who's. Well, that's enough of, of uh, Warhammer. <laughs> but we do have some. <laughs> we do have some more news for you guys um we're gonna get uh a new conjuring movie what do you think yeah. about that stuff oh, conjuring well um well we just saw the trailer for conjuring 3 uh, the devil made me do it mm-hmm. the devil most certainly made me watch it yeah <laughs> you're not too impressed <laughs> I don't know, man. It's you know, like it's it's James Wan, right? Who who made mm-hmm. these movies, and I think he he really gave the horror genre. Like I'm a huge horror enthusiast, right? So like I've seen so many horror movies just in search of that you know that dread fix. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a lot of trash you have to go through, uh, a lot of mm-hmm. run of the mill schlock and bullshit just to get yeah. some kind of you know good feedback and. This director really, you know, breathed some new life into the genre in, you know, like what? With uh, Insidious 1 and The mm-hmm. Conjuring after that. Um, and I thought like, wow, this is, um, you know, this is some real fresh air that actually has some good things in it. They, uh, you know, they, they 
play with the tropes a bit. You know, they have some some unusual scare tactics and they play with your expectations. And I absolutely yeah. love that. Sure. sure. And then it got very derivative and it became sure. just like a one trick pony as in like, you know, The Conjuring will uh, copy itself with the sequels kind of. And same with Insidious. Yeah. Uh, it just went downhill. And I haven't seen Insidious 2, actually. I love the first one. Yeah, first one is great. Um, second one is okay. It's it's not the worst. Um, but it's it's not scary either. I saw it in cinemas, and it was just like, eh, you know, it's an interesting story, but it's not scary. And, no. and same with uh, 3. It's just like, eh, you know, it has some cool concepts that they were going to explore, but then didn't really deliver for me no and same goes for conjuring conjuring two, two i thought was like was okay um the story was okay it was was fine you know but it wasn't yeah. scary and then you know they had the, all the spin-offs with the nun which is complete garbage and mm. interestingly interestingly enough they made annabelle based on the doll mm. that appeared in the conjuring movie yeah, yeah. and Arguably, the Annabelle scene in the Conjuring movie is scarier than the Annabelle movie itself. Yeah. But then Annabelle 2 was actually not that bad. It had some pretty uh, spooky scenes, in my opinion. Yeah. Interestingly enough. Um, so, with the Conjuring 3 trailer, though, it... Uh... Yeah, I mean, take it from me, I'm not too into horror movies like that i'm i don't easily scare and yeah. like you said to me it's like if if they're not perfect yeah. it just breaks the illusion a little bit yeah and i'm not that interested and uh, i remember like watching the ring when i was a kid yeah you know that gave me that you know that uh, that was good that was really good the american ring yeah that mm-hmm. that was my first ring so not Ringu, but yeah. Yeah. And um, I basically almost ever since that haven't been scared like that again, you know? Right. Uh, but yeah, I can enjoy a good horror movie. But like when you see this trailer, one thing that strikes me is that there is a lot of exposition here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, they're, they're super cutting it like insanely close. And, you're basically like, what is is this movie four hours long? How are they going to fit all this into a movie? Yeah, you know, because you're you're getting so much exposition and so much like, okay, it's based on some kind of I don't know crime in the Americas. Uh, uh, it's the Ed and Lorraine case files. They kind of are basing yeah. it on because they were like the paranormal investigators in real life as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, that. Yeah, that. Those are the ones from the uh, previous movies, right? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I misinterpreted that a little, but no, yeah, and yeah. and then there's this guy who, like, innocently, uh, presumably innocently, was manipulated into doing something horrible by some spirits or something. And yeah. there's a trial. There's demonic possession. There are something that looks like giant search parties out in the woods. There are yeah. Was, yeah a huge amount of scenes and exposition here. Yeah, and there there are some things in this that I felt is um I felt they are missed opportunities. And yeah. that is, for example, um I always appreciate the fear of the unknown. That's yeah. something that's yeah. really compelling to me. And that's part of why I love uh HP Lovecraft so much. Or like the mm-hmm. at least his works, right? Um because it always plays with you don't always you know, the, the main characters don't always even encounter the monster. They'll just go no. about their things and hyping it up and, and kind of like, you know, be, scaring themselves with the thought and everything. And then later they'll find evidence that there was something horrendous, like just right next to them the whole time, but they never encounter it. You know, these things. Yeah. Um, the I concept agree. of like forbidden knowledge and, and things too horrible for us to be able to comprehend these things, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Conjuring one had some something with that because Lorraine, uh, the 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 female protagonist, she yeah she's supposed to be like she she's like clairvoyant or something, right? So she can see things. Um, and there is a scene where she sees something during a possession or like exorcism, 
that scares her so bad uh, that she gets traumatized and and like it keeps her from from not wanting to do it. You don't see what it is. You just see the 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 possessed guy grab her and she just like completely flips out and and screams. I thought mm. that was brilliant because you don't know what she sees. No, no. But now, uh, and I think in one of the subsequent movies, they kind of show you what she sees. Uh, mm. That ruined it for me. And then now, not only that, but now we get to see completely because now you can see that she suddenly t- comes into this dark world where you she encounters some yeah. kind of running CGI asset dump. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's like. Yeah, this is such a this is exactly the opposite of how you make something scary. I mean, it's scary for for teen, 14 year olds that are um, you know, just starting to dip their feet into horror uh, mm. and the cinema, sure, but this is not for for veterans at all. Seasoned horror enjoyers. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I think uh you're very much onto something me not being easily scared uh, i can absolutely agree with the um, sentiment that the unknown is the most scary factor in any uh in any effort to try to scare anyone you know yeah fear of the unknown is really strong in in humans and like w- always when you see the monster when you see it kind of clearly painted it's always less scary uh definitely i feel um and um like you said building up the the fear of something that you can just barely grasp at the edge of of kind of uh almost reality you know yeah is very tantalizing and eerie and also scary you know absolutely and uh yeah yeah i'll go on yeah, I mean, popular hor- horror kind of successes that were innovating, like uh, the the Blair Witch Par- Project and, mm-hmm. uh, for instance, uh, Paranormal Activity. Uh, yeah. Not to lord, lord those movies, but, I mean, they were, the concept was novel and cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, I th- especially the first one, I think, had a lot of potential. It maybe wasted a little, uh, a little bit because it's so cheesy but <laughs> but i mean the first the first part of that movie is very cool because like the blair witch it's like a documentary yeah style you know you're supposed to just be be along for the ride in this uh amateur kind of videotaping uh, session you know with somebody trying to document uh, a small goblin living in their in their home <laughs> yeah uh, or a demon or whatever you know and, yeah uh, and like initially that works so well because you you almost never see it you never you almost just kind of hear it in the background you can hear some footsteps and stuff like that and it does really evoke that airy scary feeling but then you know the monster gets or the demon gets more and more you know brave almost (laughs) yeah and then it's more cheesy and and lame so I, I I thought that for yeah paranormal activity that's definitely true, but in in Blair Witch at least the original yeah. you 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 never actually see anything. You just see like at the end you just see the guy standing with his um with his back to the towards the camera in the corner after disappearing. Yeah, and then it just cuts kind of and so so that movie you still really don't know what the witch looks like or if it even is the witch, right? And yeah, yeah. Totally and I th- so the Blair, I think that was part of why it got so wildly successful. Ex- exactly what you're saying about how the point of view or like the method it's shot makes it even harder for the the viewer to actually grasp, uh, get a mm. full view of the surroundings and everything, and um, and as such, you know, and, and the fact that it was innovative or innovating the the whole found footage thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, Conjuring Three specifically is kind of opposite of that, because mm. in Conjuring One they had some pretty interesting scares. Um, I thought because like some you know some of the setups and the scenarios are more spooky. Um, they're still quite intense, but then the build up, um, like for example, even when you see the ghost here, there is like this thing where you don't always ex- know when to expect it. 
So, for example, there's this one scene where they enter the bedroom and there's this, like, very tall wardrobe. And they kind of look up and down a couple of times, I, I think, for because like, they're kind of following the uh, where the character is searching. And then yeah. suddenly you just see this fucked up ghost sitting on top of the wardrobe, like all, mm-hmm. you know, hunched over. And the the thing that I loved that Insidious 1 also did uh, is that you see the ghost, but instead of it immediately becoming apparent and uh, there's like a, you know, loud noise and all that, it mm-hmm. lingers on it for scare. a second. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it lingers on the ghost. You, you get to be like, wait, isn't that... And then it doesn't make the sound until the character sees it. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, I, oh, oh, fuck! You you get you have the time to get that, like, oh shit, um, before it, you know, hell gets loose. And same with the the baby call, no, um, uh, the baby's room scene in Insidious One, where yeah. I don't know if you remember that, but when things are really starting to ramp up, the 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 main husband character he's running back and like back and forth between rooms. And then he runs into the baby's room where there's like the crib with the curtains. Right. And yeah, and, right. and that that stupid vampire ghost thing is actually leaning into the curtain in like from the back. And you don't see it immediately. Um and the thing is like the sound doesn't come immediately either. He just runs into no. it and he's suddenly there just standing there. And you're like, wait, isn't that and then uh you know, it goes off. And I was like, oh, fuck, that really shook me back then. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Insidious, the first one, had a lot of good scares like that. The one yeah. with the, the uh, where the father, or the, what is his name? Uh, yeah, the main father. Yeah, I can't remember what his what his name is. <laughs> yeah, right. And he's kind of standing, looking, looking at the camera, and there's this canvas or drape or something behind, and that fucking voodoo looking crazy guy is just standing exactly behind him, and he tilts his head a little bit to reveal him. Yeah, 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 or maybe yeah, yeah. He's yeah. sitting in a chair or something. Yeah, that that really got me. I remember. Is that the one where they're sitting? Um... Where, where they meet like that medium the first time or, or whatever yeah i think yeah i think that's the one yeah. yeah oh i mean i mean the setup to that scene is great because like that's mm. when you kind of the the mom of the father is talking about like when you she had a dream in which she kind of like um projected her consciousness or like she was traveling in her dream kind of like her son is doing uh spoiler mm-hmm. alert by the way but uh yeah. and then she she goes into the, the room of the kid that's pos- or like that's being haunted and you see that demon thing standing in the corner but you just see the shadow and then mm. you know he's just pointing at the crib and stuff and then uh and then she says like oh it's it's as if i can still hear him now and then you hear that little creaking sound and then suddenly like boom he's behind her <laughs> for a second yeah yeah oh such a great setup and such a mm. Yeah, and Cities One is great. It has some cheesy moments, but it has a lot of creative stuff as well. Definitely yeah, worth. Yeah, definitely worth. Do you remember? Do you remember that movie Sinister? Did you ever see that? One? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was also that, part of that like new wave. Yeah, that was kind of coming out at the yeah a little bit previous. I don't know, a little bit earlier than Insidious, or yeah, at least around the same time. Yeah, around the same time. Yeah, but it was. I also thought that was really good. It was. Um, it was also kind of experimenting a little bit with the formula. Yeah. Uh, well, the the kind of the demon in Sinister is uh, he's not you know that as classical of a jump scare guy. He, he's uh, the the drummer of Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, basically, he's a, he's a he's called Bagul. Oh something. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what it was. Uh, which is like some kind of native language for the boogeyman you know or a yeah. version of the boogeyman basically but uh he uh he uh, abducts children i think yes uh, that's his <laughs> that's his thing but what it, a nice the guy. first yeah but the first part of sinister is he's used very sparse yeah which is good you know and he is very much kept in the background i mean the the finale he, he is exposed and you can see him and you know that kind of takes the scariness a little bit out but 
but the first part of the movie is really good, I think, and the build up to that to that crescendo. If I remember correctly, even in the end, you don't see him much at all until the very, 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 very end when he's carrying yeah, the corpse yeah, or right. whatever it was. Um, yeah, yeah. But and up until then, even in like the scenes where he actually lets the dead kids do most of the um, of the legwork, which yeah, yeah, that's the thing because he kind of possesses them and uses them to 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 lure more children in, you know. Yeah, and uh, one of the absolute like the atmosphere is one thing in this one it has some really like creepy fucking like ice like the guy you can really feel the the guy's like isolation and, and yeah just like how he's always sitting up at night and you know that like you know he's alone with this shit and then he watches those fucking videotapes yeah yeah the videos <laughs> and they are so fucking creepy and well sh- well made um yeah yeah very and especially i remember when I saw this in the cinemas, um, there was this especially one jump scare that really got me so bad. And it's the one where, uh, I don't know if you remember the one where they they used the lawnmower. Yeah, when when he just stands there. Uh, it's kind of uh, like... In the background? Yeah, or, yeah. No. It's like the, the uh, videotape. Is yeah, like, yeah. He, I remember it. it. I it's remember this it. really weird uh, background noise, which is like... It's really weird and, and, and like creepy and eerie kind of like background noise and then or like sound. And then you see him just like going with the lawnmower after looking at the mm-hmm. family in the window. And then he walks with the lawnmower and then it's just like sudden cut that he's running over the head of the guy with, with the lawnmower. And it's just like so sudden and he screams and everything. And it's just like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, I remember. I it's remember. just so creepy like with the whole almost like snuff kind of quality to the movie yeah it's a little bit snuffy yeah yeah it's a lawnmower scene people are people do agree with you on the interwebs oh they do (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's like a a top search in google yeah i just center series is is like um it's a great movie i i thank you for reminding me of it it's actually one of the greats of that time as well um and I think that for now, uh, today, like Sinister Two, of course, was I haven't seen it, but apparently it was like complete garbage. Yeah, like it went from like let's say an, a solid eight out of ten to down to like two out of ten, like that kind of drop, apparently. Yeah, and um, to be honest, you didn't really need a follow up to that story either because it had like this kind no. of yeah. I felt like it told the story it needed to tell in the first one. Yeah, I agree. It was very, very much, you know, self-contained. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, scary in its own right. And if I remember correctly, the the guy, the ghoul, had his own little universe or something at the end there. Not to spoil, sorry, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> which was also, like, a very uh, kind of cool twist. A little bit like Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah. Seeing that movie. Yeah, uh, and... You know, they also knew that they didn't have too much of a budget, which is why yeah. they knew that they could make him like, yeah, make him like kind of creepy if you just see him in glimpses, but then also use him very sparingly, and that worked mm. so great for the for them to the movie's credit. Yeah, and it's often it's weird that because it's often when when money is constrained, yeah, that you know creativity shines absolutely, and horror and... is one of the genres that benefits the most from that. Yeah, yeah, it... I would agree. Just, just look at Evil Dead, like that series. That there was, you yeah. know, Evil Dead one and two was made on like, well, at least the first one was made on as a student project uh, for Sam mm. Raimi and Bruce Campbell and the others. And that movie has so many creative th- twists to it, and it's so well made when you think of its circumstances. And when they made the second one as well, it was just like this is an instant classic. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's. And also, they had, like, a a shoestring budget. And, oh, and fucking Bad Taste, you know? One of the first Mm. movies that Peter Jackson ever made. Like, if you want to see... If you want to see this slocky, pulpy start of a great director's (laughs) career... (laughs) uh, Peter Jackson, the the fucking director of Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, King Kong, like, all these things made this movie called Bad Taste. (laughs) 
<laughs> which is a fantastic yeah, a movie. One. It's so funny yeah. and it's so nasty, but it, it's so quotable. And he stars in it himself as this completely deranged character that loses part of his brain and becomes like this <laughs> super alien killing deranged badass. I just, I just this just see it. It's insane. And then he went on to make Brain Dead, which is still probably one of the most bloody movies that ever existed. Yeah, and that was kind of one of the points of the movie, wasn't it? Yeah. I think it was kind of hell-bent on making it very bloody. Yeah, 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 and, and it sure uh, was. Like that. Yeah, I mean, that last scene with the giant Lawnmower? zombie guy. Oh. Am I spoiling? No. Nah. Uh, when they're when you're using the, um, the lawnmower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh and stuff and yeah just basically I, I think they used a pig's blood for that scene yeah and it was like the most amount of pig's blood ever used in a scene and i think it still is to this day it's many gallons of blood that was used in that movie i don't remember exactly how much but yeah they have a record yeah and, it's dude, some, like insane the fucking lawnmower dead. scene <laughs> yeah do you the remember lawnmower that? scene yeah that's a, yeah of course i mean that, well, that's once again with the lawnmowers that's a that's a topic for today <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh i oh. mean brain dead if you guys haven't seen it um if you're horror fans of any caliber and you want just like the most insane batshit like violent but also funny uh movies that really kind of was one of the defining points of a great director's career brain dead or dead or alive or like dead alive i think it's called as an alternative title depending on where you live see yeah. it it's it's like it, it has some fantastic quotes like the priest that suddenly knows kung fu and just like kicks the head off zombies and saying like i only yeah. kick ass for the lord <laughs> yeah that's right oh my god that it's such a good movie i mean it's part of my childhood really this movie even though it came out <laughs> much too early for me yeah. i remember watching it at my friend's house and we just had a blast with all the quirkiness and you know yeah just great fun yeah, yeah dead alive it's it's the name it's, i don't know where brain dead and dead alive is kind of separated into what regions but yeah i know at least here it's called brain dead and yeah it's brain dead here oh man i had completely <laughs> forgotten about that movie what a great piece of art peter jackson you're the man yeah <laughs> it's so funny that he he's the one who made it also yeah that's the long more scene when he comes to the door yeah <laughs> and i th oh. and, and he's the that's when he's like party soa and he's just like yeah yeah that's right party <laughs> you, you have the we always used to uh, we had some something called gorbies <laughs> remember gorbies <laughs> have you ever eaten that oh yeah 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 gorbies. yeah yeah gorbies <laughs> The, it's like um the microwavable pan pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a microwave oven pan pizza, which is you know not a, ga a gastronomical experience. No, it's not. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, we always uh, used to eat Gorby's, and I remember one time when we were watching this movie, we ate some Gorby's, and suddenly we weren't too keen on finishing the Gorby's because. <laughs> You know, the insides of Gorby's just really looks like zombie innards. Mm -hmm. It tastes like it, too. Sliced up. And basically, probably tastes like it, too. So It's, it's a, only edible a by uh, inexperienced 13-year-olds that don't know any better. I mean, imagine surviving on Gorby's. And what, what do you think the nutritional content in a Gorby's 10-pack is? A 10-pack? Can't be uh, yeah. Uh, fuck a 10 pack will be like <laughs> i actually got a, a photo here where you can actually see the, the content you know uh, it's um okay it's not per 100 grams gorby's contain <laughs> 983 kilojoules or 234.9 uh kilocalories 8.1 uh, grams of protein 33 uh grams of uh carbohydrates mm -hmm. and the rest is yeah basically there's basically no 
other essential nutrients in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing uh, like a 10 pack of that would equiv- equivalent to what? Like uh, fucking 3,500 calories approximately. And just like yeah, 300 least. grams of fat and I don't know, 100 grams of protein for a 10 pack. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe 100 grams. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Taste mm. those clogged arteries. Yeah, (laughs) but the thing is that there's just nothing healthy in them as well. You know, you can eat like a gourmet burger and at least you get some, you know, you you get some value out of it, even though it's very much unhealthy fats and, you know, carbohydrates. But this is just, it's just unhealthy. It's There's no redeeming factor. (laughs) It's not even that good. No, it's not good. I mean, if you you want to go... For like a, a shitty pan pizza in Norway uh, or Sweden, for that matter, um, Billy's is a much better alternative. Tastes a lot better. Billy's. Billy's pan that. pizza, yeah, that one is pretty good. Uh, it has a lot more cheese and it has like some nice, like the, the normal original one is pretty good, and then you also have chili uh, that cheese. That one, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a lot better. One, yeah, this is the sweaty gamer. Yeah, uh, <laughs> kind of with them, yeah. that's what you. <laughs> It's this and the the first price Coke. Oh, kiwi. fuck yeah. yes! That's like the, pimples in a bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's like first price Coke, or I mean, uh, this um, convenience store has uh, a, a, a like cheap uh, brand, its own brand, which is cheaper than every other main the, brand, and yeah. they have their own Coke. And we just call it FPC for Express Coke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's really cheap and it tastes shit. Yeah. Uh, it tastes like shit. But this and a couple of Billies, you know, mm-hmm. like three liters of two, two, one and a half liters of, of FPC and, yeah. and a 10 stack of Billies, and you're ready for a land party. Dude, <laughs> like, I mean, it's funny you should say that because my introduction to Billies <laughs> by itself was like, uh, I think in 2003, maybe 2000, mm-hmm. yeah, 2003, about there, summer, um, because like I used to, always, like my my granddad lives in like the the vacation islands that I currently work in, right? So we used to go there in the summer, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> 11 year old me would go there, and my cousin who was two years older, um, he was always like the super cool guy, uh, for me at least. Uh, yeah. But he was also a super sweaty gamer. He he's responsible for introducing me to classics such as Heroes, of My Dramatic Three, um, you know, Stronghold, Stronghold Crusader, oh, oh. Battle Realms. Heavy hitters. Yeah, it's just a lot of stuff that I watched him play. And <laughs> when he started entering the, his teens, um, there was this time, and this was probably that summer when I I came there to visit. He was in the living room with his PC, like desktop PC, set up on the tiniest table with the shittiest chair. <laughs> you know? That's so. I mean, if you if you were a true hardcore gamer back in the day, yeah, you would be able to fucking play in any position. You know, the most uncomfortable, <laughs> yeah. just sitting on some fucking sitting on a stick, basically pulling it. You know, deeply inside your anal cavity, you would still be able to sit for. 10 hours straight. And yeah, game, it was, it was just a minor inconvenience, really. And, just uh, a minor inconvenience. <laughs> Your fucking CRT monitor is suspended by duct tape from the ceiling. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, would still be able to fucking, you know, deliver. Let's yeah. not let's not forget the, the all the creative methods of uh, or replacements for a mouse pad. Like all sorts of old books and newspapers yeah, 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 sure. and whatever the fuck you can get your hands on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. I think for him it was like a triple stack of books, and he had like the the mouse with the wheel in it, or like the the the, oh, the sphere, yeah, not the optic you one. Had to have that. No, yeah. And yeah, he was, was playing RTS one. games with that. And uh, you know, and and the thing is, I used to like when I got there that particular summer, he was sitting there and he's like fucking peak gamer um, form, and mm-hmm. he was eating two of those like the billy's pan pizza and mm. i was like wow that smells so good and also i was really hungry and he's like no you can have a go grab some slices of bread i'm like no but like bro i i, I don't want a slice of bread when i see you eat that fucking you know 
fat heaven uh, in front of me. He's like, oh, you're such a, you're such a food wreck, you know? And I'm like, bro, look at your fucking self. Um, Jesus, yeah, that was, that was very non uh, self aware. Yeah, yeah, it was typical of him. He would always be like hard to get with everything, right? And then, yeah. Funny thing is, uh, he was playing. I remember uh, Battlefield Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had gotten it very early, and I had just read it about it in like PC Gaming World magazine before, and I was like so hyped for it. I, I just I was a huge fan of 1942, and yeah, I was like, yeah, wow, yeah. Battlefield Vietnam. That's like not out yet. And he's like, no, this is Battlefield Vietnam, man. Just try it, and I got to try it. And I was like, mm. wow, whoa, Battlefield Vietnam is such a fucking good game. It's so much better than 1942. Yeah. I remember Battlefield Vietnam. That was also such a land game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I can't really remember having, like, having, because, you know, Battlefield is, you need to have a lot of players in order for it to be proper Battlefield. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little bit hard with only, like, four or five players, but... If you, add, do it. if you add bots, it's like it's it's better, but it's still not yeah. the same as playing. It's still a little bit, you know, janky because the bots weren't that good back then. Yeah, and yeah, and it was always a little bit hard. But I can just clearly remember when Vietnam came out because it had some banger music. Yeah, on the loading screens and during gameplay and stuff, it was really cool. You know, flying st- F four Phantoms uh, deep, uh, you know, over the jungle like low flying. Oh, that's yeah, that was so cool. Yeah, not to mention, I still remember the um, the montage music that plays in the main menu. It's such a like, it sets the it sets the tone for the game so perfectly. Mm, and then yeah. you, you have the um, uh, when you're in any kind of vehicle in the game, you can scroll through like different Vietnam era uh, stereotypical songs, like for example, yeah, yeah. Credence, uh, Fortunate Son. And and such and like right of the Valkyries and all that, so you can yeah you can, yeah oh so good yeah that was good that was very good <sighs> man such good times we went on a huge nostalgia trip right now we might as well call this the revival of nostalgia corner but you know <laughs> don't we always go on like a long nostalgia rant <laughs> <laughs> we kind of do uh, but. But yeah, what, what what were we talking about before Billy's Pan Pizza and and Gorby's? <laughs> let's let's kind of loop it back, okay? So we we're talking about Gorby's because of uh, War. Dead Alive or Brain yeah, Dead. Brain Dead. Yeah, because we were actually trying to like talk about what the the problem with modern horror is, mm, and yeah. the problem with Conjuring Three trailer not looking very scary at all it looks pretty shit to be honest it's very mediocre and run of the mill um it does so i think i would agree the potential but savior I mean, yeah uh, judging from what the re- kind of general public's reaction to the trailer i mean it's got a hundred and twenty five thousand likes uh and one thousand dislikes basically or one point eight thousand and i don't and, get um, it I... Yeah, because people are so easily hyped. They're not critical at all. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like you said, people people are just, you know, they see that this is gen, this is liked, or a lot of people have seen the movie or the trailer, and uh, it has a good like to dislike ratio. Yeah, automatically press like. You know, it's like a group think kind of thing. Peer pressure. Yeah, it's a group group behavior type of thing and i think that's yeah. why a lot of things get you know either praised to high heaven or just lambasted to like cyberpunk for instance you know yeah yeah yeah. it's just hated on universally and everybody's like oh my god how could they how could cg product for red be such fucking devils you know <laughs> yeah but that's taken it so far people are just kind of following along the narrative that other people are are you know joining on it and it's a reinforcing self-reinforcing mechanism i mean by all means if you find this kind of movie scary uh all the power to you i kind of wish i was you <laughs> because i don't really yeah. get scared that much anymore by by run of the mill horror but um if you had fall like i just can't see any fan of the original movies um kind of like still 
not seeing that this is going downhill in quality. Um, just like, you know, okay, so what do they bring to the table this time? One thing is the possession and stuff. Maybe the storyline could be interesting. But then, yeah. then I was like, you see the kid lying on the black water bed, and you see yeah. like there's a demon in the mattress. That's like courage to cowardly dog stuff. I mean, in that yeah. in that in that show, oh, like Mario, there's yeah. a demon in the, in the, in the mattress. <laughs> exactly, stupid, stupid dog. dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, you you know, have you seen that Exorcist, the Exorcist parody episode where Mario gets possessed? Uh, yeah, I have, but that's like ten years ago. Or because the demon there is in the mattress. She she ordered they order a new mattress that is delivered by these demon looking right. cats in a horse and carriage. And then <laughs> <laughs> now I want to see that episode. Yeah, it's so good. And then she they, they put in that mattress, and the courage sees like the, that. There's like this demonic face in the in the mattress of the like, Oh no! Oh no! And then yeah, she yeah. The, and then the <laughs> mattress possessed. possesses her from the mattress. The, the episode is the demon in the mattress. Yes. Well, there you so, go. That's exactly so. that's Conjuring Three, just shittier. <laughs> and I just found something very inappropriate. <laughs> what did you uh, find? Relating, <laughs> relating to that, I'm gonna send you. We're not gonna discuss it. Okay, it's too inappropriate for the podcast, but. Maybe I'll try you and give can, a PG thirteen uh, description of what I see. Okay, you can. Yeah, it's sure. Just <clears throat> you have your work cut out for you in this one, Steph. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Feast your eyes. You you want to know a funny story? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what what kind of like is that? Is it made in paint? It's like That's the sh- absolute shittiest, like electric retard version, zero point five <laughs> level of art. Oh uh, yeah, and, and they even signed it with the MQ, like the the artist signed it. <laughs> yeah, I was so proud of his work. So basically, it's like it's, the uh, worst lewd, lewd rendition of uh, Courage doing <laughs> something to Muriel in uh, <laughs> in that mattress. Like why? Yeah. <laughs> uh, why does Jesus this exist? Christ. This yeah, is... no, this is good. This is the good side of the internet. This is the fun side of the internet. You know, this is th- this is like a cursed image right here. <laughs> it is. Now we're cursed. Uh that just I I <sighs> <laughs> oh. I, mean, I I also like how you're like a magnet for that kind of like electric retard style <laughs> of like paint uh, yeah, made memes. The paint made especially very lewd and horrible uh, <laughs> images. Yeah, I mean, exa- <laughs> if anyone listening to the pod- podcast ever knew Electric Retard, we can't go into detail because it was very, <laughs> very not not PG. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that was like some peak culture right there. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it was the before internet. Uh, yeah, but but uh, you want to give us a shout out if you knew about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you you want to know like something really? Um... See, I have this, I have this like small, not phobia, but like always like that fear of accidentally uploading stuff on on social media, like well, if your yeah. screen lock goes off in the pocket or whatnot. And there's sure. a reason for that, <laughs> and it's related to electric retard. Oh, oh. Okay. See, <laughs> so, you know, uh, I think this was like six years ago, maybe seven, six, seven years mm-hmm, ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my, I, I picked, I was at home um, back in Norway on vacation from uni. Yeah. And uh, I, I picked up my phone from my pocket and I, I saw like this uh, <laughs> notification on Facebook saying like, like dank n like the picture you uploaded and i was like a picture i uploaded <laughs> and it was a picture from electric retard that i saved for some reason and it, <laughs> and you uploaded it like in, it, it got in it got posted or something yeah something like that like it just <laughs> it uploaded it to add it to my <laughs> photos in facebook or something and it was like one of those like 
really, really not safe for work, kind of like controversial electric retard pictures. And I was like, fuck! <sighs> So I, I just, okay. like, immediately put my profile <laughs> locked down. <laughs> just, like, just oh delete, God. delete, delete. And thankfully, I, I think Dank N was pretty much the only one who saw it. And thank oh. fuck for that. Thank the throne. Uh, <laughs> thank the throne. I mean, we got to give some context now. I, Electric Retard was just, just a, a regular old internet page with paint, kind of cartoon, uh, small cartoon episodes. Yeah, like comics uh, strips, almost. Yeah, dr just comic strips in dr drawn in paint, and they were horribly. I mean, even though they're very crude, yeah. Uh, you can. I mean, the 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 content which they held within were not. It, it was of such a character that you couldn't even. You could. You had to kind of respect that, even though it was drawn in paint. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because I, it was so, it was so insanely violent and grotesque and, you and could, you could definitely racist see what and everything. Was going on. Yeah, I mean, and it was it was just made to be the person who created it must must have been like uh, you know t trying having a, a think tank of people trying to come up with the most offensive. And horrible scenarios yeah. that you can basically it's like, take every box of fucked up and triggering, just everything, like fucking everything from like all kinds of horrible shit you can imagine, right? All yeah. the way from just, child just... murder to racism to everything. It's just in there just for shock value. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and mix it up even better. You know, trying to <laughs> incorporate every it's it's horrible. <laughs> just, just be offensive to to every sense. Yeah, and, basically. And it's like the the picture in question. Like, I think it's because uh, I saw this picture. And I was like, wow, this is pretty fucked up. And I I saved it to send it to another friend or something. <laughs> yeah, and that's how it ended up in my gallery. Uh, and then like the thing is. I think this picture was one of those where it's like, um, no, I think it was because he uploaded something new because he was in hiatus because he got so many death threats and stuff, you know? Uh, and, yeah. And then, yeah like, right, he uploaded right, something right. new, so I saved, downloaded to save it to send it. Someone else was like, hey, Loki, you uploaded something new and it's really fucked up, right? Uh, and the picture was like the one where you see like there's a b bunch of Jews in a plane and then they, 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 just like crash the plane into Mecca. Yeah, that's uh, okay, like, folks. Oh. That's basically like. <laughs> I mean, you gotta you gotta laugh because it's so absurdly it's offensive. Just, yeah, it's just like they, how can we offend these people as much as possible? Yeah, it's it's like a parody almost. And but I saw that I was like, still, oh, you couldn't. Boy. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't post that to Facebook. I, people who are not in the know about this will not. Take it lightly. <laughs> no, and that's why, like, the th that's why when I saw that, not only did I accidentally upload shit to Facebook, it was electric retard. I was like, "Fuck!" Yeah, you know? it was like the worst possible scenario. That's arguably worse than an accidental dick pic, almost. Mm, yeah, almost. and a lot of a lot of the new friends that I had gotten on Facebook through uni what, were also Muslim, right? So I was like, "Oh, yeah," shit. It was like, "Fuck." Um, yeah, so it was really and, bad. But I mean, no, no one gets off easily <laughs> on, on electric retards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, every, every race, every possible angle, everything is covered. I mean, like humanity is being, as a whole, is being super shit on. Is yeah, in electric yeah, retard. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was a. Uh, <laughs> that was a rant and a half. Okay, people, we gotta, we gotta just, just slice it off right there. I know it's not pretty, but uh, <laughs> remember to stay humid, stay dank, and free of electric retard. Love you guys. Like and subscribe.